Well, yes, this is a very special edition of the Attraction Marketing Meeting. We are going to be talking about that gold at the end of the rainbow, the abundance in your business. It doesn't, it's not elusive like a leprechaun. <laughs> you don't have to wish for it. You don't have to leave it up to luck. You don't have to chase any rainbows. We are going to examine how to create attraction marketing that gets people excited about doing business with you. We're going to be talking about in honor of St. Patrick's Day, we are going to be talking about designing evergreen marketing assets and evergreen. This is how I came up with the theme. Evergreen means that you are creating marketing assets one time and getting a repeat or recurring benefit out of it. Evergreen also could mean that you're creating something one time and it continues to work for you in your sleep. It continues to bring in results for you. Now the results for you might be um, in a different category. So on the right hand side of the screen, I'm showing you my new attraction marketing profit process. This is the system that I have created. This is the system that we follow in my mastermind group with my private clients, with my magazine funnel clients, um, with my done for you marketing clients. And the, the process is that we need to, we need to start with a solid foundation with credibility and authority, right? You need to be seen as the go-to expert in your field. You also need an audience to serve. So once you have established yourself as an expert, as credible, as someone that can be trustworthy, you'll need to build an audience, an audience of people that you can nurture, love and serve from that audience. A lot of, you know, most of the time audience is built on social media, which is a platform that we don't own. Right. So if you're building your business only on social media, that's a kind of a dangerous place to be. So what we want to do is give people the opportunity to, jo to join our email lists. And that's in the middle of the funnel. That's the third, the third platform, a lead magnet or an ethical opt in. This could be a PDF, a checklist, a webinar, a Facebook group, a free event, a magazine, a book that you give away for free. Uh, you know, maybe you do free plus shipping. So you'll need some kind of way to move people from your audience on social media onto your email list. Now, from there, you need to get good at conversions. So you'll need a conversion event or and or conversation strategy. So maybe it's that you want to move people to phone calls with you. Maybe it's that you want to move people from your Facebook group onto your webinar. Maybe you want to move people from your email list to your live event. You need to be thinking about how your buyer's journey is set up and how to move people along with you. You also need on the back end of your business, irresistible offers that are systemized and scalable so that you're not creating new offers every time that you have a client at the, uh, towards the end of the presentation today, I'm going to talk about something that I've never talked about before, which is my disbelief in RFPs request for proposals. So if you feel stuck in your business, that you're not getting enough traction, that you're working harder than you need to. Um, and it's because you're responding to new client requests for different offers and different services and proposals and all that. I'm going to, we're going to talk about how we need to get ourselves out of that mindset. And all of this is very important. This system and this process is very important because with a predictable, scalable and replicable way of doing business and of marketing your business, you can get better results for your clients, right? Because you're not just making it up every day. You're not just creating something new for your clients. So it's important that you can get client results, which also help you build your credibility and your authority and the process starts all over again. So that's what we're going to talk about. If you are just, I think everybody on here knows who I am. I don't see any new people, but just in case you are new to me and now allow me to introduce myself real quick. My name is Jen DeVore Richter. I am the CEO. Uh, I've got a couple different companies because I'm an entrepreneur, a few different ways I make money. But one of those is called Instant Media Mogul, which is a done for you magazine funnel service. 
more about that uh, some other time. I'm also the founder of an organization called Boss Women Rock, which helps aspiring entrepreneurs uh, create a plan for, for making their first six figures, for making their first 100K or adding additional revenue streams onto their business. In 2019, I was awarded Innovator of the Year for excellence in business coaching, which I'm super proud of. My background is basically, I'm a corporate marketing executive dropout. I left corporate America in 2003. My claim to fame is that I was the manager of advertising and consumer research for NASA at Kennedy Space Center, which people think is pretty cool. And it's the hook that gets me booked for speaking engagements, which I really love doing as well. I am doing these attraction marketing meetings for you, for the people that are on my email list. Maybe you're in my Facebook group. Um, these are for the people that already know me. You already like me. You already trust me. You feel like I have something of value to say to you. So this is just another way for me to provide more value into your life and help you grow a business that you love. All right. So that's who I am and what we're doing. What we're going to, what you're going to gain today are these three things. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about productivity and I want to talk about burnout and I want to talk about how marketing can be built and scaled if you have the right systems and the right tools and the right strategy to help you avoid uh, burnout and help you be more productive with your marketing. I want to uh, discuss with you today what it takes to grow revenue without working harder. And we're going to talk about what it takes to grow your business without being busy. This is what we all want, right? We, we all became an entrepreneur for freedom. Do you agree with me? Yes or no? Did you become an entrepreneur for freedom so that you could do what you want, where you want, when you want, with who you want, make money how you want, and not have to sit in some corporate office with neon lights beaming down on you? Is that why you became an entrepreneur? Put it in the chat. Yes, do you agree that you want freedom? Lorna, I know that you're going to say that you're going to say yes, Lorna, because Lorna works out of Costa Rica. <laughs> Lorna's in my mastermind. She's an awesome person. She gets to know her. I mean, freedom, freedom is what it's at, right? I mean, otherwise, why do it? It's, it's too hard. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work running a small business and knowing what to do and who to trust, and what to invest in. Right. So that so that's what we're doing. We are. This, this is what I, I want you to write down. So are you taking notes? This was the first thing that I want you to write down. Busy does not equal business. Oof, I think that's so good. Busy does not equal business. In order to be more productive, you need to produce. This is a quote by a gentleman named Richie Norton. If you don't know who Richie Norton is, write his name down, check out his podcast. I listened to his podcast this week and he said that and I, my mind was blown. I was like, oh, I'm gonna include that in my attraction marketing meeting because I think it's it sums up the theme of today. Yeah, Elijah says, freedom, impact and control of my life. Bruce wants to feel like a human, not a huge corporate machine. So Bruce, when I, when I left NASA, when I left Kennedy Space Center, I left because of this. I was working about 12, 12 hour days. I was working from uh, about seven in the morning till seven at night. If I tried to leave at six, because I was taking night classes, I was working on my master's in business. Uh, one day in particular, I left the building, tried to leave the building at six o'clock to go to night school. So we didn't have online school back then. You actually had to go to class. <laughs> and I walk out the building and my boss, the president of the company says, hey, Jen, where are you going? Working a half day today? And everything changed for me when he said that. I was like, you know what? Here I am, you know, just working 10 hour days, 11 hour days, 12 hour days, improving myself, getting a master's degree. And you want to give me a problem? I, you know, I'm a human being and I want to have a life and I, and I want to um, be able to do what I want with my time. So that's why I became an entrepreneur and why this is so important. Because we also don't want to fall in the trap of having our business run us. All right. What we don't want to do is as an entrepreneur, build a job for ourselves. And I've made this mistake. I've been an entrepreneur since 2003. So a really long time. I have not worked for anyone else in that period of time. And but I have made some mistakes with some future with some first uh, businesses that I had. The business was running me. I wasn't running the business. <laughs> it was attached to me. I didn't have systems. I didn't have scalability. And so when I got sick, in 2013 and had to have four organs removed and three surgeries in two years, my entire business model came crumbling down because I hadn't 
I hadn't embraced attraction marketing in my own business and in my own life then. So this is why I'm super passionate about this. But here's, here's what makes it work, everyone. You have to have the vision. You, ha you have to know where are you going. So this is my vision board that I created in January of this year. And um, just take a look at some of the things that are on it. It'll get, you'll get to know me a little bit better. So one of the things, I, I live in Denver, Colorado right now, and, and one of the, the dreams that I've had in my life, well, you know, I like living in Denver, but I really wanted to move closer to the mountains. I'm kind of like a rhinestone cowgirl. <laughs> I wanted to move closer to the mountains. And in particular, I wanted to live in a town called, uh, called Golden, Colorado. And uh, surprise, just on Friday, my husband and I signed a, signed a contract and bought a house in Golden, Colorado. So we're going to be moving there in the next 30 days. Um, you know, I also, health and fitness is important to me. I want to be able to do uh, pure bar on a regular basis. I commit to doing that three times a week. I do not work past 4 p.m. because my pure bar class starts at 4.30. So every day I shut it down at, at 4 p.m. You know, being able to spend time with my stepkids uh, now that they're older and in college and our, our time with them is very precious and very limited. You know, I also, what's important to me, I'm a woman of faith. If you don't know, I'm a Christian. And so it's important for me to, to be involved in my church and in ministry and in women's groups and in volunteer activities. So all of those things are uh, very important to me. So I, I thank you for the congratulations. I'm so excited. It's a fixer upper truthfully. So it's, it's not the house that you see in the right hand corner. It's, it's a, it doesn't look like that, but it is um, a beautiful home six bedrooms on 0.38 acres in Golden, Colorado, which is primo real estate. So we are so excited. I'm going to be building a whole YouTube studio down, a whole new YouTube studio down in the, in the basement. It's going to be super cool. All right. So I want you to start with the end in mind. Um, one of the activities that you can do to help you build the business around your life is to create your vision. What your vision for your life? What do you want to be doing with your day? What time do you want to close down the computer? What do you want to do with your free time? I just built this using a tool called Canva. Are you familiar with Canva? And it is super easy. Just drag and drop. You upload your photos and you can um, put your vision board together in Canva. In particular, I used the template for presentation, which is basically like the size that you need for a slide if you're doing a, a presentation. So just a little tip there if that is helpful to you. Um, so you, you want to build the business around the life that you want, not the opposite direction. And if you're going to do that, you need to start with the end in mind. Where are you going? If you're on this webinar, I hope that you have a service based business because this is really what we're talking about. If you have a product based business, this these strategies are probably not going to work as well for you. Um, what I do is work with as a coach and a consultant and a mastermind leader is I work with service based professionals who are experts. You're, you're already an expert at what you do. You just need a better way of marketing yourself. And there are five critical steps that you must address in order to attract uh, attract clients and generate more revenue and scale your business. So number one, you need to know how you're going to generate leads. You need a strategy for that. And we can't just leave it up to chance. We cannot leave it up to luck. We need a, a strategy that's consistent that you can do repeatedly. Okay, I'm going to share what I do and I'm going to give you some more ideas. Number two, you need a way to convert to, to move people from just being a lead or being in your audience or being a social media follower. You need a way to nurture, love and serve those people and convert them through the buyer's journey at the pace that makes the most sense for them. Number three, on the back end of your business, you need to know what you sell and you need to know what you sell at what price. So what is the average sale value of what you do. In a second, I'm going to show you my profit growth calculator that makes this really easy to see so that you can plan for success. You can plan for your first six figures. You can plan for your next six figures. You can plan for additional revenue. So what is the average sale value? Also, my favorite kind of money is recurring income. So you've spent all, if you spend all this effort in getting a client, how can you put them in a subscription model? How, what can you offer? How can you turn what you know, what you love, what you do, how you help people, what your value is, how can you turn it into a business model that has a recurring number of transactions? So for example, when I sell magazine funnels, I don't just sell one magazine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 
prompting my clients to do the magazine quarterly. So I get one client and then I sell them for transactions. Okay. Mastermind members. I sell the client one time. They pay a recurring, they pay a recurring payment for each month, right? Coaching clients, same thing. So I'm not, I'm not looking for one sale, a one-time sale. I'm looking for a relationship over time. The fifth thing is your profit margins. Knowing your numbers, knowing your expenses, knowing how, knowing if and when you need to increase your prices and cut your expenses. So I'm not going to get into the detail on that on this webinar. We'll have to save that for a different one. But these are the five critical steps. If you don't know these numbers, you're not going to be able to plan for that lifestyle business that you really want. So this is my profit growth calculator. I showed this at the last meeting and I'm showing it again because it's so important that you get it. If you want a lifestyle business that you love, that you can do working from home, <laughs> working from Golden, Colorado, working from Costa Rica, like Lorna does, wherever you want, you, you have to plan. You have to plan. It doesn't happen by accident. So if you, you know, if you know the number of leads that you need, if you know your conversion rate, then you can know how many customers you have. If you know how many transactions so if you're moving to a subscription model or recurring model where you sell something one time and people continue to pay you month over month then you know how many transactions a client will do business with you on right so that that's an important number to know and then the average sale value now here's the thing that i think is most important about this everyone is that if you want to have a business that sells something low ticket say 100 bucks or something you're going to need a lot of clients you're going to need you're going to need a thousand leads. You're going to need 250 customers or you could some, sell something more high ticket and have less customers. So marketing is math. Business is math. And so you'll need to know the numbers. You need to plan for this so that you can figure out what assets you need. If you need to get a thousand leads, you're going to need evergreen marketing assets. If you're going to increase your conversion rate from 25% to 27.5%, as just as an example, you're going to need a way to do that. You're going to need a system and tools and a process for doing that. Because if you don't have a system and you don't have a tools and you don't have a process, you, you don't know if it's working or not. You, you can't test it. What you can measure and test, you can change. Even if it doesn't work right, there's no such thing as as winning and losing there's only there's only winning and learning <laughs> failure is just feedback and we need that feedback in order to know what we need to change okay so this is an important thing you need to know that if you don't know how to plan for your first six figures i'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of this call to to schedule some time with me on my calendar so that i can help you walk through this okay and then finally your profit margin so this is how you build a six-figure business this is how you build a multiple six-figure business it's just knowing your numbers and knowing where your math is. So what are you doing on a consistent basis at a high quality to address each of those five revenue areas? You cannot build a multi six figure business on one alone. You need to know what your numbers are. OK, you need to know how many leads do I need? If I'm selling a five thousand dollar magazine funnel, I don't need a thousand leads. I only need four clients a month in order to make 20 grand. Do you see what I'm saying? So the, the, the math is really important. So I'm gonna show you here on the next, the next slide, um, get ready to write this down. I'm gonna show you a very easy evergreen, your evergreen consistency calendar, okay? So if you're creating evergreen marketing assets, we need to know what you need to create when. And this is important if you're feeling frustrated on Monday morning and you wake up and you're not sure what you need to do on your business today or what you need to do for your business today. I want to get rid of that. I, I want to get rid of the what do I do today mentality. So what are you doing quarterly? What are you doing monthly? What are you doing weekly? And lastly, what are you doing daily? OK, so we start with the top. We start with quarterly first. These are probably going to be your, they are going to be your bigger projects. They're not going to be projects that you're going to knock out every week. These are going to be high quality products, experiences, scalable systems, assets 
that you're going to be creating every quarter. This could be a free lead magnet. Okay. So if you want, if you need leads, what could you create quarterly of a high quality and give it away for free <laughs> to help you create leads? All right. I'm going to show you mine just to, so that you uh, have complete transparency in how I do it. And then what do you do monthly? All right. So here, here's just to put it in perspective here. Here's what I do. So quarterly, the evergreen marketing asset that I create is a magazine. So, and I, this works so well for me that I turned it into a service called instant media mogul magazine funnels. And I sell them for, I create them for clients too. So every quarter I publish a magazine and it's printed and online. Now online, I give it away for free in exchange for email addresses and the printed one I send to my contributors. I send to my strategic partners for referrals. I send it to my clients to stay top of mind and to sell new services. I send it to conference organizers for events that I want to speak at. I've used the magazine to get on television, on radio. Um, just today, I just announced this a few minutes before the webinar started. Just today, uh, I, I got picked up with an interview for on Medium with Authority Magazine because of this process. And I'm in the running to have my magazine featured in um, other, public, other publications, including Ariana Huffington's Thrive Global and even Entrepreneur Magazine. So because I put the energy, I, I invest the time, I invest the effort in creating this high quality piece of content that works for me while I'm sleeping, it helps me land new big opportunities. Okay. Now, this is not something that I want to do every month. It's too much work. So I just do it quarterly. Monthly, what I do is I host the attraction marketing meeting. This is a way for me to nurture, love, and serve people that are on my email list, people that are in my Facebook group, people that already know, like, and trust me, like you. And then I also speak at other people's conferences. So I have a goal of speaking on at least two stages a month. I know if I publish a magazine quarterly and I speak two times a month, both on my meeting and someone else's conference or, or both, the rest is, it's a big domino. The rest is going to fall into place. So I don't have to wake up on Monday mornings going, what am I supposed to do with my life today with marketing? It's consistent. Weekly, I do two YouTube videos. I used to do one and now I'm up to two. My goal is to get it to three or four. I'm constantly refining my system. So I do two YouTube videos a week and then I send an email to my list with one of the videos of the week, right? So that's a strategy. Now, here's the cool thing about that I love about YouTube videos in particular is that it, it is basically me speaking in my sleep. I generate interest in my business, people that are interested in doing business with me, leads, I guess you could say, while I'm sleeping because people are watching my YouTube videos. I'm going to show you some numbers that are super exciting about the last 90 days um, effort that I've put into YouTube. And YouTube is is um, brand new for me. It's a brand new effort. So Lorna says, why do you only send one video out to the email list? Lorna, I, I only send one. Most of the time I only send one because I just want to make it pretty simple. Um, I want to create a very clear readership path in the email. And sometimes when you give people too many options, they don't, they don't, they don't really like do anything. So it's, it's easier to get people to take action if there's only one option for them. This is a Dan Kennedy, Dan Kennedy lesson. No, I don't always do that. Sometimes I send out a, here's what you missed or what you may have missed email that has the last four videos in it. So sometimes I do that, but on a weekly basis, I do um, one video. Why two videos? That's just because that's what I can handle at this point. Because I have, if I was just a YouTuber, like full time, my goal would be to do a video every day, but I'm not a full time YouTuber. It's just part of my system. I'm a full time coach and consultant and magazine funnel creator. So YouTube isn't my full time job. If it was, I would do a video every day. So that's why I'm, I'm but I'm making my system better every week, every time I do it, I'm making that part of my process run tighter and getting more 
clear on what my process is. So as I continue to refine my process, the number of videos that I'm able to create will go up over time. Linda says, how long are the videos you create every week? They're usually less than 10 minutes, between seven and 10 minutes. But I also like when I do this attraction marketing meeting, this is another reason why I love doing things that can be done one time and used over and over again. So for the last two months, I did the, this attraction marketing meeting. This ends up being a long video, like 45 minutes or an hour. So I take this video, I'm recording it. I take this video and I also put it on my YouTube channel. They're very long, they're, they're, but they're some of my most watched videos on my YouTube channel. And it really helps me get my YouTube video minutes up. So, but generally on a weekly basis, I'm doing a 10 minute, a 10 minute video. Good question. Thanks, Linda. All right. Daily. What do I do? I have to make sure that I show up for my, my audience, for my people, for you, for my Facebook group in particular. So I am available 24, seven, 365 in my Facebook group. If you have a question about something related to attraction marketing right so people know that so people know where to find me on a on a regular basis so that's what i do every day i don't have to worry about spamming people on um linkedin i don't have to worry about you know sending out mass messages because i'm creating assets that are working for me even if i don't feel like working so one of the secrets that i do with my facebook group this is a little hack, little secret that I do. Lorna knows that I do this, but many people don't. I pre-schedule my posts in my Facebook group. So I create conversation starter posts in my Facebook group and I pre-schedule them. You can do that. So even if I wanted to take a week off from my Facebook group, I know that I still have posts that are gonna be created and content that's gonna come out. Uh, Alyssa says, these are great videos with tons of info. Thanks for subscribing, Alyssa. I appreciate, I appreciate that and I appreciate the shout out on the videos. So, I, so the big idea here is to get you to start thinking about creating marketing assets, right? Creating experiences, creating systems and tools that will continue to work for you, even if you don't want to work. So I, ho I hope that I'm explaining that well. Okay, so uh, just as an example, every time I publish a new magazine and I do the promotion of it, I open up my inbox and boom, 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 boom. I can see all of the new magazine subscribers. I can see all of the people that are joining my email list, which is super cool, right? It's about creating assets that will generate business for you with minimal, I mean, not minimal amount of work, but doing something one time and then continuing to get people interested in doing business with you. Davo says, I appreciate the videos too. I've watched a few and I found that I'm more likely to watch if they're less than 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of like the secret, you know, secret spot, I guess. But you'll have to experiment with your audience. That's just what works for me and what works for my people because I know everyone's busy. All right, so here's some numbers. Uh, these are, I pulled this up yesterday. So YouTube is a new strategy for me that I added in after I had mastered magazines, after I had mastered email marketing, after I set up my Facebook group, after I had some of those other systems in place, then I added YouTube. So in the last 90 days, um, in the last 90 days on my brand new channel, I've had over 4,000 views, 275 watch time hours, and uh, went up by 92 subscribers, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm at like 305, I think it's a brand new channel, but I'm already getting business off of it, which is super cool. Now imagine two, okay, think about this. In particular, that watch time, 275 hours. That's 275 hours that people are consuming my content without me having to speak. I don't have to jump on a plane. I don't have to go to a conference somewhere. I don't have to do a webinar. I don't, I'm creating this 10 minute video, like, you know, two times, 20 minutes worth of content a week and i'm getting 275 hours of eyeballs on my content eyeballs on on me on on my business and on the value that i provide to people do you see so you see how that how awesome that is just by creating something one time and the cool thing about it is with videos 
is that it is going to continue forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It's just going to have exponential growth. So that's why creating evergreen assets in your business is important because that growth chart is trending up and it will continue as the subscribers go. And as I get better at YouTube and, and figure out, you know, how to increase watch time and all those little tricks that you do on YouTube. So that's inspiring. The last session I, um, I showed you this, this is my hidden funnel loops. So if you didn't watch last month's attraction marketing meeting where I go deep into exactly how my funnels are set up, you can go find that video on the YouTube channel, but here's basically, these are the assets that I create. So I'm not, I'm not creating something new, right? Um, I have my YouTube channel. I have my Facebook group. I have a magazine landing page. That's it. Okay. Those are the, those are the tools and the systems that I use, but I want you to see that the, the one thing that they have in common is email. Okay. I'm all, I'm thinking about how am I moving people to the next step? How am I moving them off of YouTube into my Facebook group, onto the magazine funnel, into a call, onto my email list? I'm always thinking about that. That's what makes the systems work. These things standing alone will probably not get you the result that I'm talking about. You have to think about how does it all work together as a system with the goal of being moving them to an asset that you own, which is your email. If you are, if you know me and you are my client or in my mastermind, <laughs> I, I always say the emails are the gold in your business. You know, at St. Patrick's Day, we're talking about pots of gold and rainbow. The emails are the pot of gold in your business. Bruce says, does YouTube reporting break down the watch time into increments, how many watch time for entire videos? Yeah, it does. Yes, Bruce, um, you can, there's so much information you can get out of YouTube studio that's available to you that will show you watch time by video. I've also got other tools that I love like vidIQ and TubeBuddy, vidIQ, TubeBuddy are plugins. You have to pay their subscriptions that you add onto the back of your YouTube channel that give you even more information. Um, like really, so, if I can't measure it, I don't do it. That's my rule. If I can't measure it, I don't do it. So I measure and I'm looking at my statistics for my channel and I'm always wanting everything to be green going in the up, which it has been, which is great because I'm, I'm working on it and focusing on it. Great question, Bruce. All right. Before we get to RFPs, I'm not, I'm not going to go on a rant about this, <laughs> but I get these messages from people on LinkedIn where I just want to shake them. And I want to say, what are you doing? Spamming people in their inbox, spamming people on their newsfeed. It doesn't work anymore. This is not how people buy. I am never going to hire anyone that sends me a cold message on LinkedIn about them. I'm not, it's not how people use the internet. People use the internet, your people use the internet to Google or YouTube, look for YouTube videos or join Facebook groups to look for answers to the problems that they have, okay? So we need to remove the word I from our marketing. Remove the word I from your marketing and watch what happens. Watch what happens when you start showing up and providing value consistently. That's why you need these assets. Watch what, watch what happens with your business. I think you're going to be amazed. So move people to media you own. Let me check the time. All right. So, so far what we've talked about is how to generate, how to grow your authority. You know, I use magazines and YouTube and speaking to grow my authority. I also use it to build my audience, my funnel. Remember I use, so I'm building authority. I'm building my audience. I'm putting people in my email list to move them through to the next step with me. Now on the back end of my business, of my numbers, my, my 100K plan, I have to know what I sell. I wanna get t-shirts printed up that say, <laughs> just say no to RFPs. If you don't know what an RFP is, an RFP is a request for a proposal. Now this might come in a number of different languages, depending on how you, the clients that you have. 
proposals might send me your pricing, send me a proposal, um, or I have a project. Oh, I have a project and I want you to tell me how much it would cost for you to do the project. When you, when you run a service-based business like that, it's going to be very difficult for you to scale because you cannot create systems out of new product offerings all the time. The other problem that you're going to fall into, since we're talking about creating lifestyle businesses and more freedom in your life, is if you're spending a bunch of time creating RFPs and creating proposals, that is time that you are not, uh, you're not, you're not being profitable. Now, I know there might be some people on here that you do proposals and they work. As a general rule, I don't advise it because the back end of your business model is constantly changing. I want you to think and consider today. I hope that I encourage you to consider not doing that anymore. Moving away from proposals and having set offers, having set values priced at the price that you know you need them to be at in order to make the revenue number that you want, okay? If you leave it up to chance, if you leave it up to luck, if you're constantly changing it every month, it's going to be hard for you to move that dial. It's also going to be hard for you to create recurring and subscription payments. Do you see what I'm saying? It's going to be it's much more difficult because proposals and RFPs usually end up in project work. So what do you sell? What do you sell? What is your consistent main offer? Start with the main thing. Start with the main offer first. What is your main offer? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, tell me what, tell me if you have a main offer, what's your main, the main thing that you sell and do you have a set price? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Do you have this already or is this something that you need to work on? This is important. It's important to think about. It's important to, even if you don't have it, it's important that you know that it's something that you need to address. And I have a way of creating offers called, uh, it's called irresistible offers to where you make your offer not based on changing time for money. So if you're creating an offer and you're going, well, that might take me 10 hours to do times a hundred bucks an hour, it's a thousand bucks. That's not the way to price it. You need to, you need to price it based on value, based on uh, valued bundled pricing strategy. Okay. So Dave is working on it. Bruce says he's doing LPW business coaching, two calls per month at 1497. So yeah, Bruce, so it, you don't want to two calls per month. You don't want to just, um, it's not just about the call. So make sure you have other assets included in that. Monthly coaching package, one for individuals, one for group. Okay, so you have, uh, Elijah has environmental art, originals, commission and prints, pricing established for all of them. All right, so you have your main offer. What is the upsell? What's the upsell? So if someone, did you know that, <laughs> something like 30% of the time, if you offer a client that wants to do business with you, they want to take you up on your main offer. If you offer them an upsell, they'll take you up on it. So this is why McDonald's and, you know, fast food restaurants that are profitable are profitable because you don't just go to McDonald's and buy a cheeseburger. They say, would you like fries with that? Would you like to supersize that? So those are some, so upselling people and knowing what your main offer is and then what is your upsell. So Elijah, if someone buying print, so what I used to do when I had my photography studio was I would sell the photography, but then as an upsell, I would offer to go to their house and install it for them. Cause most people don't know how to install professionally framed artwork. So I would, I would add that as an upsell. Would you like me to come out to your home and install it for you? So what is the upsell? Also, what is your downsell? So what if you get a prospect on the phone and they say no? Do you have a, because of price, do you have a place to put them? 
This is why I created the, the virtual mastermind. The virtual mastermind is basically my intro. It's like, it's the down sell from people that can't yet afford to do private one-on-one -on -one consulting with me or can't yet afford done for you marketing services. I down sell them into, uh, into the mastermind. So she says upsell is a little harder. Love the installation um, virtual thing. Yeah. So think about it. These are these are questions because you're leaving revenue on the table if you don't have a place to move people. Oftentimes, a lot of if two this month, <laughs> two of my virtual mastermind clients said they wanted to upgrade into private consulting, into private one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. So if I don't offer that, I don't have any place for them to go. So you have to have a place for people to go up and go down. Also, how do, is subscription built in? So Lelija, think about, um, it's, it's a little more difficult with products. That's why I put that caveat at the beginning is works better with services, but what could you offer them where you could create recurring revenue every month so you can sell multiple things to one client? All right. So Bruce, it looks like you've got your, uh, your pricing worked out. Well, I just thinking about a seasonal series. Yeah. So questions. These are good things to think about. These are good, good problems to wrestle with in your business. But these are the most important things. Additionally, what could you cross sell? Uh, maybe there are affiliate programs that you could offer. Uh, maybe uh, so like for my people that ask me, hey, Jen, what do you use for email marketing systems? I use Active Campaign. I have a whole page set up called stuffjenloves.com where I can cross sell affiliate programs. So I get I get free money every month from Active Campaign and other and ClickFunnels and other tools that I recommend because I'm able to make a recommendation for products and services that I don't offer, which is and it creates additional revenue in my business without me having to create anything new and without me having to actually do more work. So what could you um, offer as a cross sell? Is anybody here doing affiliate sales at this point? Put it in the chat. Yes or no on affiliate sales. The, I, I love affiliate sales because it's a um, passive. It's you just make a recommendation and it's passive income that you're getting without having to do any more work. So if you, let me know if you're doing it or not. So Lauren is just setting them up. Elijah doesn't have any. Bruce, are you doing affiliate sales with the tools and the systems and the products that you actually use? Do you have a way of making it easy? So I created the landing page, stuffgenloves.com to make it easy for me to send to people, send people to, and, um, be able to make it easy for people to i'm like well every time someone asks me that i just send them the link and they go there i don't have to do any marketing i don't it's just a cross sell right so i'm not using it to get new clients i don't promote it randomly i just promote it i just offer it to people that are already doing business with me as a cross sale all right so so bruce what are so be thinking about what are the i think the best easiest way to do this is just to think about what software programs you're already using because software programs often have affiliate programs built in and all you have to do is get your unique link and share that with your coaching clients or your nlp clients and you're off to the races and you get mailbox money which is my favorite <laughs> i love mailbox money all right so that's why you need to know what you sell okay so let's let's recap i want you to I, I, now I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to bring the profit growth calculator back because I, I think it's important for you to see how all of the strategies on creating evergreen marketing assets match up with your numbers. Okay. So how, so, so for leads, if you know your numbers, if you, if you know, you need only 20 leads or 50 leads or a thousand leads that can help you figure out what kind of lead generating asset you need to create. Once you know your conversion rate, because 99% of business is done in the conversion, right? You Once you know what that rate is, you know you either need to increase your leads 
maybe create a second asset like I did with moving from the magazine funnel. I mean, yeah, from the magazine to the Facebook group to YouTube is a third lead generating asset for me. So if you need more leads, you could either, you know, put the pedal to the metal on your existing assets or add another lead generating strategy. Conversion rate, looking at uh, your close rate. If you're getting leads and you're getting people to talk to, but you're not closing any business, then that feedback, not failure, that feedback might tell you that you might need to do some sales training, that you might need to work with a coach like me on how to close on the phone or how to create irresistible offers that will make it easier for people to say yes to. All right, does your margin increase in step with the percent increase in leads? Profit margin increases in relationship to expenses. That's so that's where your profit margin works. So you'll need to you'll need to know. Have you read the book Profit First? I, I this is a book. I didn't I don't I didn't write it. I'm not an affiliate. This is just a complete straight up recommendation. Mike McCallowitz is the author and he wrote a book called Profit First and he shows you exactly how to build profit into your business first. But profit is a product of keeping your expenses low um, and, and learning how to grow revenue without spending a fortune on marketing or without letting your expenses get out of control. Um, Bruce says at Keller Williams, that was required reading. It's an important book. I highly recommend it. I think everyone should read it. I run my business on the profit first model. All right. So this, so that's where profit margin comes in is, um, on your expenses and your overhead also on your prices did you know the fastest and easiest way to grow any grow revenue in any business this is important i'm gonna say it again the fastest and easiest way to grow revenue in any business is to simply increase the price now most people freak out when i say that and they go Oh, I'm afraid to increase my prices, Jen. I'm afraid to offer something for $5,000 a month or $5,000 a quarter because I don't think my people will pay for that. That's a limiting belief that's in your mind. That's, that's in your mind. I have $60,000 clients. I have $5,000 offers, $20,000 offers. That helps me keep my profit margin up. So keep your expenses low, keep your prices higher. You don't have to... You don't have to sell a $47 course to 20,000 people and try to eke out a living. You don't have to do that. So that's, that's how you can, can uh, get your profit margin up. All right. What else? Okay. So we're wrapping it up here. I want to make sure that we've got a couple time, a couple minutes for, for chat questions. So do you see how this funnel and the profit growth calculator works in relationship to helping you create your evergreen marketing assets this is a it's a process it's a system there are strategies that can help you create the lifestyle business that you want create the money that you deserve have the time freedom that you want without having to have thousands of people on your on your in your audience tens of thousands you can you can do this with small with small numbers you actually can if you know what your numbers are the 10 commandments of attraction marketing, according to me, <laughs> it's never about you. It's always about the audience. Always see to inspire, educate, inform, and or entertain. There will always be clear next steps, call to action. Even on a YouTube video, you need to think at the end of this video, what do I want them to do? At the end of my YouTube videos, I do not make an offer for people to call me. They're not going to. They're watching the YouTube videos. And all I do is ask them to like the video, give it a, make sure you're subscribed, stay tuned to the next video. Because my strategy is that I want to increase my watch time so that my subscribers will go up. So every little piece of content that you create, all of your assets need to have clear next steps and calls to action. Email list building is your number one priority because that's the evergreen asset that you own no matter what. So if my YouTube channel goes away, my Facebook group gets taken down, um, 
if I never get hired for another speaking event ever again, it's okay because I have my list. Your email list is your number one priority. Never add anyone to a list without their permission. This is the no spam zone. Never send an email that doesn't provide life-changing value. You must be consistent. So once you get clarity in what your process needs to be, what assets you need, which ones you don't, you have to be consistent. This is not a one and done experiment. This is not a fly by night tactical approach, right? So this is a strategic approach for evergreen marketing so you get results over time. There are no shortcuts. If you're looking for one, go make cold calls. The level of quality you put in is the is what you're going to attract and receive. So if you're not attracting and receiving the right quality of clients, it's probably because there's something lacking in the quality of your marketing. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce loves number eight. And number 10, you must be yourself, even if it repels some people. Don't try to be all things to all people. Just show up as your true authentic self. Don't hold anything back. There are the people that are meant to do business with you, the people that you're meant to love, nurture, and serve are out there. And they, and they just want to see you show up as you. All right. So that's, those are my 10 commandments. Any questions? Any questions? Go ahead, put them in the chat. If you are interested in working with me, if you're ready to get started, here's my calendar. This is going to take you to an application page. And then on the back of the application page, it's going to take you to my Calendly link, rockwithgen.com. Even the way that I do appointments is a system. This is an evergreen asset. Do you see this? It's important. So, you know, sometimes it's important to watch not just what speakers say, but what they do. Pay attention. Pay attention to what their process is. What are the tools they're using? What are the systems they've created? Every single thing in my business, every single touch point, I've tried my best to create a system at, and I continue to make the system even better. It's an evergreen asset. My calendar page is an evergreen asset. So go check that out, rockwithgen.com. All right. Uh, oh, Javadi wants to see the Ten Commandments again. Let me get that going. All right. Here's the Ten Commandments. Go ahead and screenshot them. <laughs> you can screenshot. You have my permission. Javadi, which one's your favorite? Javadi, which one's your favorite? Give me. She's reading them. All right. Davo says that was great. Thank you, Davo, for being here. That's all I've got for you. Uh, make sure that you stay on the email list and stay active in the Facebook group. You can see, um, sure. Okay, so you can see when the next attraction marketing meeting is. Javadi's is number seven. Elijah's is number number one. All right. So go ahead if you're ready. If you want support, if you want help, if you want um, clarity, if you want someone in your corner, if you want to work with me, if you want to be uh, supported by my mastermind group, go to rockwithgen.com. He says, I'm a great researcher, but not so proficient with original content. Is it okay to repurpose, not plagiarize? Um, Bruce. Okay. So if you're, if you're going to take someone's idea, if you're going to take someone's content, the kind of their concepts, it is, you need to be very clear that you learned it from them. So that's why I attribute Dan Kennedy a lot. I say, oh, here's something that Dan taught me. Um, if I'm quoting someone, I definitely make sure that I'm quoting them. But the really the best way is to take multiple ideas and put your own spin on it. Put your own spin on it. Linda says, what's the fastest way to build the email list? Mm, I mean, for me, the magazine was the fastest way to build my email list. That's why I focus on that. Because I tried lots of different lead magnets before I've tried PDFs and checklists and other than speaking. So when I speak at other people's conferences, um, I usually walk out of there with just a boatload of business. But if you're not a speaker and speaking isn't something that I can do evergreen, I wanted an asset that I could that would just produce leads for me um, all the time. So the magazine, what I have found is the best and fastest way to build my email list because it's remember I said one of the rules is the level of content, the quality of your content is going to attract the quality of the people into your list. So the magazine is 
super high um, content. Also in my magazine, I use contributors. I interview people and thanks Bruce. Thanks for being here. I interview people that have audiences. And so because I've interviewed them as a contributor in the magazine, they will share the magazine landing page because it's a funnel. It's not just a printed magazine. They'll share it with their audience and with their list. And that helps me grow my audience and grow my list without having to spend any money on advertising. So for me, that's, um, that's been great because I'm using the strategic partnership to build um, and grow my audience. From there, really, I mean, Linda, it really comes down to what your people could benefit from. If your audience wouldn't benefit from a magazine, but they, um, you know, would benefit from like a checklist or I've done, I've done the five day challenges. I've done video series. I've done webinars. I've done, um, my Facebook group is a good lead generator for me. So it just depends on what your people would respond to. So yeah, Elijah says, I'm thinking that the magazine might work for me. I just need to generate enough content beyond just art. Yeah. So, so my, so my process, if you wanted to work with me to create your magazine is I come up with your content strategy for you. And it's part of, it's part of the process. So you're, I'm not, we're not just going, you know, send me pictures of your work. We're thinking about what the articles need to be. And then we think about who you could get to write the article for you. I'm working on a magazine right now from one of my recurring clients who's um, in the property management field, in the property management industry. And she gets other people to write the articles for her. She doesn't even do interviews. She just gets them to write the articles and they're her strategic partners and associates in her industry. And they just send her, they send me the Word document with their content on it. So getting the content is actually the easiest part because People want to participate in things that build their credibility and their authority. And, and if you can, um, you know, if you tell them you're going to share it with your audience, you're each going to be contributing to it to help build each other's audiences. It, it's an easy thing to get content from people. All right. Okay. So thanks everyone for being here. And uh, that's all I've got for you today. Again, happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks for joining on. And let me know how I can be of continued service to you. Thank you guys.